Uh, and zombies, of course, are, for whatever reason, very big in society, even though there have been no purported zombie sightings that we know of that seems to be in the consciousness. Yes, it the does. The ponies, not so much in the consciousness. And uh, we had a, an alert viewer in Beverly, Massachusetts, send us a tweet uh, moments ago, and uh, this is Jesse in Beverly, was asking, I don't have enough space for a pony. Could I just have a kitten instead? So what's your response to that? Well, I, I believe I can address this uh this concern, uh, Jesse of Beverly, Massachusetts. Let me say this, um, uh, in addition to many people have reported, oh, I'm allergic to uh, ponies and such, uh, we do have scientists who are working on hypoallergenic versions of ponies that will not uh, create any allergies. And we also have scientists who are also working on uh, special rays that will shrink things down. Um, and that way we can shrink the ponies down to a more manageable size. Okay, well, I mean, that's reasonable. Now, personally, the, the time travel issue has some practical considerations that I don't know that you've thought of. Um, let's say that you go back and you strangle Hitler. That's all yes, well and let's, good. Yes, let's say that. But then do you go back and also strangle Goebbels? Or do you go back and, and strangle uh, uh, Generalissimo Francisco Franco? So you need to go back and strangle... I, I will let the voters decide. Okay, so, but, and, and, and then what's the, what's the ethics of deciding, okay, it's okay to strangle this historical figure? Yes. Well, sir. what happens if this power falls into the wrong hands and they go back and strangle FDR because the Republicans don't like him? If it wasn't for FDR, we wouldn't have the New Deal. We don't like the New Deal. Let's get rid of FDR. Well, so, I think we must keep this technology out of uh, such Republicans' hands. What if they get elected and they have the well, technology there? Now, let's say, let's just hypothetically that I am elected president. Okay, let's hypothetically, say, okay, president, president vermin supreme. Sure. Do you think I'm going anywhere? Do you think I will relinquish the reins of power? Do you I, think I will abide by the constitutional requirements to uh, leave uh, the presidency after a eight short years. Do you think you could hold on to the presidency that long? Well, I believe uh, if I, once all my various plots and plans and uh, evil devices come to pass, um, yes. And you're going to live forever? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. I will. All right. And well, if, then that if answers not, that. let us say this, I will go back in time. I will swap out with my younger self and transfer my younger self to the future. Okay. Now there's another... Which will be the present. I, I like your idea of bringing some of the greatest minds from the past to the future. I mean, what would Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin have to say about what we're dealing with today? The issue... They will no longer have to spin in their graves. They can they spin would, in person. They would spin in person, but they would also probably get very sick because we have adapted to the microbes in our environment and the different pathogens. They have not. And so being exposed to, to, the, to the pathogens that you and I are able, able to handle, they would likely die the same way that the Native Americans died off once they came into contact with the white man. People from the past coming in contact with us would be at an evolutionary disadvantage with their Two with words their to that, sir. Bubble boy. So you would put them all in bubbles? Yes, sir. Okay. I, I believe it would all right. be necessary. And actually, there, there's an emerging industry right there that you can subsidize and that you'd create some jobs for the people that... Um, you know, couldn't get work yes, uh, shampooing they're... poodles. Uh, I mean, not poodles, but ponies. Now, you've already been in, you've, you were in the South Carolina primary as well. How did that go for you, and how was that different than the New Hampshire primary? Uh, well, I, I, a small correction there. I don't want to mislead anybody. Oh. Or actually, I do want to mislead lots of people, but uh, in this particular instance, I, I'll be very upfront and okay. honest with you, sir, because you, see, you have a very honest face. Um, and that would be, of course, no, I was not on the South Carolina primary ballot. Um, I was on the New Hampshire primary ballot. Okay, so the, 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 the buy-in on the South Carolina ballot is thirty-five thousand dollars. The buy-in on the New Hampshire primary ballot is a measly one thousand dollars. I was easily able to raise the one thousand dollars from constituents across this great land of ours, uh, but thirty-five was uh, pushing it a little bit. Um, and you and you are on you, but you're on the Democratic ticket in some other states. I'm working on that uh, process. Once again, uh, ballot access is a very difficult thing for underfunded, minor, or fringe candidates. Uh, it's very difficult to uh, get on many of these ballots. Uh, thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of signatures are required. And uh, for an individual like myself, who, uh, whose campaign uh, is only real on certain levels, um, that is very difficult. Okay, now, of course, with my recent uh, internet fame, things could change. Okay. Perhaps we could sucker like lots of people into collecting signatures. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, once again, I have a very wide and very shallow base of support. Right. I mean, granted, there are thousands and at this point tens of thousands of people across America who I consider my constituents. And for them, I do this. I mean, I am 
acting perhaps not with their full-on consent, but I believe that they will appreciate anything that I do for them. The stupider I act the, in public, um, the greater appreciation they have for that. The, the greater uh, subversion I offer the, the dominant paradigm, um, the better for these people. Now, you've been running or, or getting on some ballots since 2004. Yes, sir. And this year, you're on the Democratic ballot. Uh, in in the, the last time, 20, uh, 2008, that's right. Yes, sir. You were on the Republican side. Yes. So, in 2004, I was a, a Democrat in the D.C. primary also. Uh, and the answer to that, sir, is that uh, I fly a flag of convenience. Sometimes I'm a dino. Democrat in name only. Other times I'm rhino, rhino in name only. I have no real party allegiance. My base of support straddles, I mean, it, it, it stretches across the political spectrum. Um, there are people who, for whatever reason, love me that are on the far right, on the far left. Uh, they have an appreciation for what I do. Even uh, during the primaries when I'm actively dogging their candidates, they also know that it's not just their candidates that I'm go going after that I'm spreading the love, that I'm going after all the candidates. So you're an equal opportunity uh, anarchist? Truly, truly, sir. I mean, I, I'm not playing favorites. Um, okay. Occasionally I will do people favors, but I don't play favorites. Now, uh, I understand that you glittered uh, Randall Terry. Uh, yes, sir. Can you tell me about that? Um, I can, and once again, it was probably the, the big kickoff of my uh, campaign that really started things rolling. I think that was one of the snippets that went viral, uh, in addition to just my deadpan performance presenting my ridiculous ideas that seemed to strike a real resonant chord with America. So people can find these vi these videos on YouTube? Uh, if yeah, they look yes, up sir. Vermin Supreme? Yes, sir. Debate uh, Vermin Supreme. Okay. Uh, of course, you might end up with the uh, my debate with Aleister Crowley or my debate with uh, Jimmy McMillan last night, or there, there's a number of debates that I was involved in, but this particular debate, uh, you might go uh, lesser known candidates, because it was a lesser known candidate forum. It's sponsored by the uh, New Hampshire uh, Political Institute, uh, affiliated with St. Anselm College in New Hampshire, and every four years um, they have a debate for lesser known candidates. Uh, it was actually uh, instigated by Jim Taylor, a uh, lesser known, uh, back in 96. and. In, I was eligible the last time. If you're on the ballot, they invite you to the debate. In 2008, I was on my way to the uh, debate itself, but I was snowed out. The, apparently, the CIA weather machines were very successful in preventing me from attending that particular event. Uh, this year was a little bit different. I was able to attend, and I think uh, all factors seem to, to work uh, together very fortuitously in that, uh, because this year I was running as a Democrat in order to give uh, Barack Obama a direct primary challenge. That right. was my decision. It was right. a very hard decision, but it was the decision, decision that I decided upon. Um, the fact that Ran uh, Randall Terry, uh, infamous uh, anti-abortionist, the founder of Operation Rescue, who has been arrested dozens of times and and is very close. I mean, he's just a few clicks away from Homicide. supporting uh, abortion killing doctors right. and clinic bombings. I right. mean, I don't want to say that he is directly involved. He's, I don't believe he is, but he's just a few clicks away from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so he's a very infamous, uh, and he's terribly anti-gay marriage. So, he, so he's a homophobe, he's uh, anti-choice, and uh, generally in my book, uh, that's enough to uh, raise my ire against them. So politically, you know, we, we disagree on that point, let us say. Okay. Um, now, the fact that he was running as a Democrat allowed me to be on the same stage as him uh, during the Democratic uh, debate, the lesser known candidate debate, and uh, just as luck would have it, our names were alphabetically one after the other, Supreme and Terry. Um, and I knew I wanted to do something special for, for the man. Um, you know, he's a very charismatic individual. I mean, we get along personally. Okay. Uh, up, uh, I think before and even after, I really do. Um, although I find it, his politics and, and methods reprehensible, uh, uh, as far as <laughs> sitting, talking, right. and chatting, it's fine. I'm okay. very civil with all. I'm very civil with all. And that's a, a part of my appeal, I think. Uh, but. You know, we were chatting and joking before the event, and uh, you know, before the Democratic candidates went on, we all go to the restroom, and it was there, of course, that I made the offer. Uh, hey, Randall, would you like to go to the restroom and have some homosexual gay sex? Uh, we thought that was pretty funny, but he declined. Okay. Um, then we were on the stage. At one point, uh, the the hypothetical question is, who you uh, endorse in, in the campaign? Randall Terry said himself, and I was next in line, and I also offered that I would write in Randall Terry. Um, so I, I was drawing him in, and of course he was not too pleased to be sitting next to a crazy man, I will say that. Okay. Um,
like crazy like fox. Crazy like a fox. And so, uh, Mr. Terry, you know, he spouted his. his In the debate, it was very hard to tell him from another conservative. He, uh, I think so. I think it bumped up his uh, a little bit more recognition that he might have got. A lot of times, the people who are most opposed to, for instance, gay marriage or homosexuality, it's because they themselves are afraid of their own nature. Time and time again. Time and time again. Time and time again. Uh, the, uh, the more repressed, the more. You take a look at Newt Gingrich and his, you know, talking about ethics and morals. You know, he's a going after Bill Clinton when he was in the House of Representatives, and yet he was carrying on affairs. So the, here, the sheer hypocrisy is absolutely stunning in our public officials. And and yet that's also something that you have going for you because you yourself are a hypocrite, and so I'm that that helps totally you. Totally comfortable with my hypocrisy. I I advocate my hypocrisy because my campaign is marginally reality based. I can say opposite things, uh, one right after the other. I can pander, I can unpander, I can attack. Um, I have a certain amount of freedom by uh, not being beholden to special interests, by not being beholden uh, you to don't my have viewers. Well, and, and actually that's one of the, this is gonna hurt you, I think. After Citizens United equated money with free speech, the, the non-French candidates have been able to amass a great deal of money, not necessarily in their campaigns, but in their political action committees that support them. So very true. You don't have a political action committee running ads for you. Not yet. Not okay, yet. so you're, you're in, that's something that's in the I works. Mean, there, there are, right now it's a viewer generated content. I have a, uh, w because of my meme status and one of the definitions of a meme is, you know, I went viral, which means I was in several uh, videos uh, on YouTube that had over a million hits apiece. Um, I have my own video, I am a meme, my own music video um, that's got 50,000 hits. But uh, it, uh, because of that, I be transcended to memeiness, which essentially is the internet phenomenon that is appropriated, an image that is appropriated, that is altered, that is uh, put into different contexts. Say, like the pepper spray cop. I mean, right. his, his image was mutated. You saw that's thousands right. of images of him. But he loses control over that. Correct, sir. You lose control likewise I over have, you. I have indeed. And so I, you I admit had a, you've lost control? Well, not total control. Okay. I had a debate with uh, Jimmy McMillan, the rent is too damn high uh, guy last night, also another meme whose likeness and image has been appropriated. And uh, so that's generated a lot of fan art, a, a lot of uh, meme art. And so I've been uh, able to use this art in my campaign. Um, and I am so you're reappropriating what's been appropriated from you? Yes, sir. And I, is that I, appropriate? I believe it is. And okay. I've also recently uh, applied for a trademark status cool. protection for my name, Vermin Supreme, so that I don't lose uh, that c control, that part of and, me. And a lot of people do lose their names. Viewers should know that is your actual legal name. It is indeed, sir. Why? 
Uh, because all politicians are vermin, I am the vermin supreme, and that is why I'm the most qualified candidate in this race at okay, this Okay, so that's why you say you really yes, are sir. qualified. Yes, sir. Because you haven't served on in any order, offices. In order to uh, appear on ballots, for mm -hmm. example, you d it does have to appear under your legal name. Okay. Uh, I've sued several police departments in my long and storied career, and uh, it's vermin supreme versus the city of Los Angeles, vermin supreme uh, versus uh, the New York City Police Department. Um, this, these are very important things. Uh, w when a police officer, when I have an interaction with an authority figure and they want some identification, they know exactly who they're dealing with right away when I present that identification. They okay. understand. They get it. And they have no choice to not get it. And um, so, yes, uh, of course, uh, my name is a very important part of me. The, the name that appears on the ballot, Vermin Supreme. Even if you haven't heard of me, uh, you know, voters have to contend with the, that name on the ballot, those two words. It, it becomes an abstraction in a sense. Um, and e even in that sense, that you know, the name is bigger than my physical being. You have never been on a school committee. Uh, no, sir. No, I went to school though. Okay. You have never held any office. You've never won uh, any I was, election. I was. Have you run for any other? Any I was other? mayor for a day. You were. I was. Where was that? That was in in my high school. Oh, nice. I was uh, president of my junior achievement society. Okay. Did you have a platform at that time, or uh, were you still? developing what, what, what you're running on now? Uh, that was very early on. That was before okay. I really launched a, a full political career. And when did you decide to even enter politics? It occurred around 1988. I was living in Baltimore. I had uh, accomplished many things in Baltimore and had about enough of Baltimore at the time. There was uh, factors which was... Uh, it was very muggy. ...making me want to move out of Baltimore. And so I declared that I was going to run for mayor of Baltimore. Because I needed something well, else to keep me there. Well, they'll run you out of town there. for that, right? And uh, so I, I did. I declared my candidacy, and uh, then I was committed to that. So that was 1988. I ran for mayor of uh, Baltimore, Maryland, 1988. 1989, I ran for mayor of Detroit, Michigan. Somewhere in there, I ran for mayor of uh, Mercury, Nevada, at the nu nu nuclear test site. Um, then I ended up expanding. I ran for mayor of the Eastern Seaboard in 1991, which consisted of a 10-city, two-week tour up and down the coast. Um, declaring myself mayor of the Eastern Seaboard. In uh, 92, I ran for mayor of the Lower 48. In 96, I ran for uh, mayor of the entire North American continent. In the year 2000, I then bumped it up and declared myself uh, emperor of the new millennium. Um, okay. So it really, although I had been utilizing the presidential primary process right. to maximize um, my statement of fact to the people, um, I wasn't for the longest time, I wasn't really in my mind running for president per se. Okay. Now, people started to make that natural assumption and that connection, and after a while it became a little inconvenient to try and explain what I was actually doing because it was taken away from the, the important issues, uh, toothbrushing and, and what have you. And um, so I just conceded, yeah, fine, I'm running for president, whatever. Oh. It just made it a lot easier just to say that. Okay. And so I have. Now, am I really running? Am I a pretend candidate who's pretending to run for president? You're on the ballot. Or am I a real candidate who's sort of running for, you know, it's, it's, well, you, well, okay. am I, is, my, is it a character? Is my character, Vermin Supreme, a trademarked a registration of an entertainer and a, a educator? Kind of like Andy Kaufman for, and his, his alter egos. Yes, I mean, it's very curious. Are you going to be a tragic figure then? Do you foresee uh, some kind of a special on you well, later? Well, I would very to? much uh, like to be able to uh, make enough to buy MC Hammer's old mansion. Okay. And, uh, and then, yes, uh, and have it all crash around my ears. Um, the rise and fall of Vermin Supreme? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I look forward to it. Okay. Well, that's that's good for you to to have something like that that you that because you're I'm I'm, I'm used to poverty and you know in obscurity and uh, it's do we know, have enough poverty there, in this fine. country? Um, well, uh, I know Mittens Romney is not too concerned about the the very poor people. Um, and is there enough poverty? Is poverty a growth industry? I think uh, obviously that the the cap consumer capitalist society has managed to uh, commodify poor people. I believe that there are several banks that are making quite a bit of money off of this uh, food stamp program, processing food stamps. Uh, that's a big profit industry. The prison industrial complex is, of course, preys on poor people. Uh, poor people who have minor infractions that can't afford lawyers are cranked into the uh, prison industrial complex where they are uh, profited on, where they're, they're made to, uh, uh, sometimes to work for free, where they're warehoused, where they're sometimes forced to pay for their own incarceration. Um, prison is a, is a growth industry. So, that, yes, there's a, is there enough poverty in America to sustain these poverty-driven industries? It doesn't really matter because it seems like uh, the middle class is heading in that direction anyway. So it's, it's a self-perpetuating 
industry. Um, Interestingly enough, Warren Buffett recently in an interview said that, you know, talk about class warfare, the rich have already won. They have been uh, attacking the middle class and, and taking all the wealth it's for themselves. It's a very, very astute observation. And when the uh, Walmart family o owns 30%, which is the equivalent of like the, bar, you know, the vast middle class, it's just, it's stunning, the, the inequality in wealth. Now, once again, um, I'm reminded of that uh, song, I Love to Change the World by uh, Alvin Lee and 10 years after when he said, uh, tax the rich and feed the poor until there are no rich no more. Um, the fact that the rich uh, have managed to set up this system where all this money is flying out of the middle class's pocket going up, in, you know, they're like giant vacuum cleaners just sort of sucking it up. I mean, at this point, Walmart is having to expand overseas because the middle class is tapped out, um, because the, the jobs are going overseas, because, the, the, you know, it's, is the game rigged? I think it is. I think uh, the, the people had better really put it together, you know, and, and it's very hard for individuals to accept what's going on, to see what's going on, and then to do anything about it because they're so damn trapped into the rat race. They're so damn trapped onto a treadmill. They're barely holding on, barely holding on to the roof over their heads, barely being able to feed their children, uh, you know, better yourself through college. The, the knowledge industrial complex has turned into just a huge profit-making entity that is uh, preying on, on the kids that are trying to better themselves and, and they're enslaving them in debt also. Uh, the debt enslavement system uh, seems to be a, a terrible thing, That the easy credit. Well, um, the, Vermin, actually, I, I have to interrupt you now, and I wish we could go back in time and just play this over and over again, like yes, the sir. time machine would suggest, yes, sir. because it's been a fascinating interview. Oh, wait, have but, we started? But we're, oh, wait, wait, we're, no, no, are we filming? We are, we're Did, done, Really? but we can do this over and over again once you have your machine all set up. Fantastic. I'm Drew Hutchison. You've been tuned to local bias. My guest has been Vermin Supreme, candidate for the Democratic nomination for president. Have a good one. Thank you. And may I quickly point out, I, I'm not a pundit, and you sh really shouldn't pay too much attention to what I say. Thank you. I gathered that. <laughs>